Well, I'm starting this video off uh, showing the rose cuttings I got. Um, in two days, of course, they haven't done anything. Now, I will tell you that if uh, death and stuff like that you see is as upsetting everything, let's go ahead and just uh, forward a little bit because uh, what just happened. I know Nancy and I've talked about we've had problems with the birds hitting our our larger windows. I put a feeder here to give them some kind of depth perception and we're gonna put some stickers on here. It wasn't just this window. We also have troubles with this large picture window outside that the, the birds occasionally will run into. I used to have that feeder you saw, I used to have it right here and that seemed to do some good. So I thought by moving that feeder over there, it would have helped. But unfortunately, um, today it was, was pretty sad i don't know if I, you can see that smudge up high with a maybe with a one small feather on it nancy and i were in the house we heard an enormous thud on the window thinking that maybe one of the doves or one of the red-bellied woodpeckers that frequent had uh, slammed into one of the windows i came running out and unfortunately Again, if you don't like this kind of thing, let's just go ahead and you can just fast forward a little bit. But instead, I found this poor Cooper Hawk. I believe it's a Cooper Hawk laying on the ground upside down. He was still alive when I, when I opened up the door. I grabbed some uh, leather gloves, but unfortunately he died. I turned I turned him over, you know, because of how birds breathing and heart is, they don't want to be on their back very long, but he didn't last but another, oh, maybe two, three seconds. So that's sad that's, you know, a proud animal like that. And the Cooper Hawks are very, they're small. I mean, well, without touching him, I mean, I'll put my hand down. You can see like my fingers, they're, they're not very big. and but they've got excellent hearing. You can see the ear canal there. And they have, they're just, they've got such pretty markings on them. This is a juvenile. Um, you can't really see this. He's got, he's got yellow eyes. They turn bright red once they get older. So I, I've had a brood of these around. I hear them all over the place. You know, of course they're after my birds. And I, well, not, they're not my birds. They're the forest birds. And I know that one of them, one of the four got one of the doves not very far off of the deck. They come flying in every once in a while like fighter jets along my deck and just swoop through that area right there trying to, trying to see what'll turn out. That one must have, I've also seen them up in the woods this way. And as you can see, it clears out a little bit up into that giant walnut tree and that's where I've seen them a lot of times. And they, they also would swoop through. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing he came in, he probably came in right here by the railing. He kind of came in this way and then thought he was getting something and, and then was following something and hooked and saw a reflection of other birds or something and went straight up there and smashed into that. And then I found him just laying right here in front of, in front of this big steel deck box I have to keep the raccoons out of my feeders at night. So it's quite the it's quite the loss. But I know there's a family of them out there, and the Cooper Hawks do re they do really well in this area. Um, oh, it's a little titmouse over there, tufted titmouse. I got a I got a pair of them just a few weeks ago started showing up. I was really excited about that. But anyway, yeah, it's sad. Uh, I'm actually going to call the local game warden to see if they want him or they want to properly dispose of him. Otherwise, you know, it's, uh, you know, it goes back to how nature takes care of things like this. If he'd fall in the woods, he'd lay in the woods and, and he'd, he'd, he'd ashes to ashes, dust to dust, basically. But it's sad. I'm not a fan of hawks, but man, this is not the way I'd ever want a hawk to, to go out. 
I'd rather they just flew away, <laughs> but they're not going to because I've got a smorgasbord set up for them. So we're getting stuff on the windows and everything. We're going to try to stop this from happening to possibly to the hawks or to the songbirds as well. So we'll end her there. And welcome again. Uh, Nancy was wanting me to do another bourbons and birds. So I thought I'd uh, throw a short one together. Uh, today, uh, Tuesday's when uh, most of the the deliveries to the south side of Des Moines and some of the small towns around out of the south end are delivered. So if I've, if I've got extra time, I'll go ahead and I'll do a little bourbon hunt, which I did today. Um, I hit, I hit like, like three or four different locations, um, a, a couple of fairways and high V's. I didn't go to any of the local smaller ones. I just didn't have the time to, to try those out. I'll hit a more extensive trip here and might even throw a camera on and show you some of the locations. Maybe not. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes later on. Um, the, I got two bourbons. Uh, one. Uh, okay, uh, this old Forester line is, uh, is a nice staple to have in a collection. And the one I added today was this 1870 original batch. Uh, what drew me to this was, well, I've got, I've got most of the other ones. I don't have an actual Old Forester. I've just got all the different uh, combos that they've made over the years. I like them all to some degree. Some of them a little bit better than the others. But I need to get an original Old Forester so we could do a, a complete taste test through that. Rich might have one. But anyway, if not, I'll grab one. It's a very inexpensive line. Uh, the thing that actually drew me to this is if you can see uh, the storyline there, George Garvin Brown crafted this back in Louisville's Whiskey Row. Uh, the name George, for some reason, drew me to that because I've got that. I've got a George Remus. And I've got a George Dickel here. So... We can actually do, we could do, that'd be in another tasting where we could, uh, we could uh, have a, a triple battle against the Georges. I'm not sure if I have any others that are tied to the name George, but that's one thing I can do. Um, if we go up to the, by the way, go state, <laughs> uh, we'll go up and we'll, we'll roll around the top shelf. Uh, the other day, I don't even know if I mentioned it, I got a, I got a, a barrel uh, dovetail, and that's a, that's a delicious one, that's, um, it's, uh, finished in, uh, port and Cabernet barrels, it's delicious, go past my blood oaths and the bookers, um, I got this, I got the, the, the blackens sitting over here kind of all by themselves, and the reason I, I have that like that is, they are American whiskey. They're not technically bourbon, but I really like this. Got a great story behind it that the band Metallica actually is behind uh, the craft of this. And the, to while they're in the racks, they blare Metallica music at the at the barrels. And the idea is to you know to vibrate those barrels and get them to where they release off a little bit more of the oakiness taste to it. And I really enjoy it. And they're also finished in black brandy casts, which gives a unique kind of taste to it, which I really enjoyed. So today I uh, was lucky enough, I found a black and cast strength. And these are a limited edition. This is, this is volume four of that. So I was really happy to find one of those. All right, got you spun back around here. I'm not actually gonna do any tasting. It's uh, it's about nine o'clock at night that I'm getting this video done. A little bit too too late in the evening for me to do any tasting. Did have a few questions that I was gonna try to answer, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, today. Uh, so one of the viewers asked if I'd ever had Buffalo Trace Tornado Survivor. And I've ne I have never actually heard or seen that. Uh, I'd like, I didn't look it up on Google or anything. Uh, Nancy just handed me that question. 
but I'd like to know the story with that. It, you know, what, what makes it a tornado survivor? Did it, did a tornado come close enough to the, the rack house, uh, down there on whiskey row or what the deal with that is? If you, uh, if you know, drop me a comment and let me know what was going on with that. But yeah, I'm not afraid to try any, any bourbon for sure. Um, somebody also asked, does Nancy ever drink the bourbon or, you know, do the tasting with I didn't us? I get that. Could you try again? Don't you just hate when your phone does that? Just picks up. I don't have Hey Siri or anything, uh, on my phone, but it does that every once in a while. Makes you want to just grab your watch and just poof, throw it against the wall. <laughs> um, uh, yes, she, she has done a little bit of the tasting occasionally. And, and her remarks, I think we've touched on that, is, you know, which, which color of Sharpie marker does this bourbon taste like? <laughs> That's what she's always said, is that she always says that the bourbons taste like magic marker, which I'm not, I don't take any offense to that, but it's just, if, if you don't like bourbon, that's, that's fine. There's lots of other stuff out there and she's not, Nancy's not by any means, any kind of a drinker, but she does, she does taste them a little bit. So, um, another question that kind of gets uh, deep into the Joe is that they, somebody asked the, the age I first got drunk and that I, I know like a lot of people on when I believe in Iowa it was when I turned legal age was 19 and I went to a local bar that was well actually was in a bowling alley in Knoxville and just like anybody, you know, pretty happy, you know, 19, I'm tough. You know, when I was, a, when I was a kid, I, I drank illegally. I, I had, I had beers. We would get beer for, I went to keggers that they, you know, had, you know, back when I was in high school. I'm not saying that was a great idea, but that's, that's just what you did back then. Um, so my 19th birthday is probably the official first time that I've really drank enough that I'd be considered drunk and enough so that between my birthday was in November and I went outside and inside of the place a few times and that cold air and that, you know, that alcohol in my system and then hitting that hot air and everything ended up, I, I about passed out. You know, they had to help me get out to a vehicle and because when you when you first hit, man, you get those seasoned drinkers in a bar and they'll they'll start buying you stuff. And I drank I drank a few shots of Jack Daniels. To this day I don't really care for Jack Daniels because of that. But and yeah, that was the first first night I got drunk. And it it was bad enough that, you know, they they helped me get into the house and threw me in the bed and parents weren't very happy with me. I was still living at home when I was nineteen, so but I got, you know, like I say, I got that out of my system, but unfortunately, you know, it happens a few more times. Uh, additional part of that question was, uh, you know, how do you view uh, uh, drinking or indulging when you're a parent? Well, that that's tough. I mean, that, could, that comes down to, to all your own personal beliefs. For the most part, after we had children, I didn't drink at all. I just completely quit. I thought, no, you know, I got to have my head in the game. You know, I'm a dad. So that's, that's what I did. Now there was times that were like where I worked at 3M, we would have Christmas parties that would be, they was actually up here in Des Moines at different hotels and, and got, you'd drink some and everything there, but we already had, the kids were taken care of and everything. We never, we never were ones to get a setter and go out and drink or something just wasn't, it just wasn't in the cards, you know, that was about the, that was about the time that I found the Lord too. And I thought, now nah, I can't, I can't do that. You know, it, I was just, it was a strict enough church and everything. Drinking just was kind of, was frowned upon, you know, that it wasn't that it was a sin, but it could make a sinner. It was kind of their philosophy. I don't really see that now, as long as, as long as it's not affecting your life just like anything else it's not it's not a sin to to drink it i mean it's just not um that's that's the only three questions i think i'm going to answer today i think nancy is going to tag on uh 
in, unfortunately I had had an incident today down in, on our new sunroom or close to it anyway that had a bird hit the window really hard and ended up it was a cooper hawk and it died and so I ended up I got it got it in a box and I took it down to the to the uh, local game wardens just down the street a little bit and I've touched on this in in Nancy's video too and they're, it sounds like they're they're gonna maybe mount that hawk and put it in their in their main DNR lo location. Or, yeah, I guess. Yeah, DNR. Yeah. <laughs> but so maybe one day I'll be able to go see the and show the grandkids the hawk that ran into my house. Or, you know, but it you know it, it upset me a little bit. Not a big. I'm not a big hawk fan because of what they do to birds. But I just I just hated that 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 majestic creature, you know, died just because he didn't know where he was going. <laughs> Craig's trying to interrupt me. <laughs> uh, so, so that was that. Uh, I also, uh, this morning, had a, a small sparrow hit the window. And everybody's like, a sparrow, you know, big, big deal. Well, I always go back to, at, at my mom's funeral, the, the song, uh, His Eye is on a Sparrow. That was my mom was a was a bird fan too, and that song we we played that at her at her funeral, so I've I've never felt ill about sparrows. There's a lot of good sparrows around. I mean, and the one that hit the window happened to be one of them. It was a song sparrow, and so it was laying there. It had wings out, head down, and and I thought, well, I don't know how hard it hit because I wasn't in the wind didn't actually see it smack the glass. So I went out, picked it up. The dogs were outside, so down on landings or down on the grass. So I thought if they come up, you know, they're gonna they're gonna grab it and that's gonna either they won't eat it, but you know, that'd be enough that it'd kill that poor little bird. So I picked it up, held it in my hand, walked around a little bit and after and went down, checked on the dogs in the yard, came back up about that time Sparrow's head kind of starts tilting up, looking at me like, "What's going on here?" Still had it in my hand. I could, I could rub underneath its neck and and on the back of its head, you know. And it just was as calm as could be. You'd think it was a, you'd think it would have been a parakeet. Took it upstairs, put it, put it on one of my flat feeders, and it just sat there, kind of wobbly. I could tell it wasn't ready to fly off or anything, because that's typically after their days like that. If they do one of two things, they die or they fly off. It's it's actually, I've never had one, you know, and, you know, knock on wood that like broke a wing or something like that, that you'd have to worry about, you know, you find a way to put them down. But so I, I just kind of held it and I put, I put it in there and I thought, well, if I leave it there, this was before the hawk. First thing I thought was one of them hawks is going to come in and grab it and kill it for sure. And maybe get tangled into the feeder and they might both end up getting hurt. So I have another feeder out there that that looks like a tea kettle with the sides cut off. And I got that because it reminds me of Nancy's mom. She was a big uh, teacup collector. She didn't really have teapots, but you know, they do have cut, they do have feeders for that, but they're I don't think they're that useful where people retrofit them. So I put put that little sparrow in there and he sat in there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I kept looking out every once in a while. Finally a house finch, the ones that they got red on like half their body, came flying in and spooked it enough, it flew out, so it was fine. So so saved, saved the littlest of birds, but the, the bigger of the birds that comes around, I, I couldn't do anything about that. So I think that's, uh, that's all I got for today. So, you know, love your bourbon and love your birds, and we'll see you later. Peace.